Well, hello, my lovely people of the internet. Thank you for coming back to watch part three. Now I would know you'd rather stare at this lovely picture of the Earth. I know I would. But we have got to get to our video. So, let's do it. Let's just uh, play a little bit of what we're going to be doing. Uh, right there is simple photography. Now there's, there's like a little camera move and clone interaction, some dynamite, nothing big. So, let's just show you how we did that, shall we? And of course the Neon Cat stuff. So, so you can see there's like a mess of boxes here. Um, these are the frames of the video, so this is like the background. Uh, and apparently it's taking a while to upload. Update. Update. Um, this, well, let's just go through, um, frame, or layer by layer. This is the camera element. This is, well, that's what I named it. This is how I moved the camera, uh, to get the me going up. And since, again, I will mention this again, I'm shooting twice the resolution, so I can do a lot of stuff with that. And this is the shake. Um, this is actually parented to the camera element, so the camera element actually moves another... They're, they're both nulls, so they move each other around. Um, these two we can just skip for now. Um, this is the vignette, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and then the color correction, which I think adds a lot to it. Because, uh, well, that's with... that's without... It's just much nicer. It's a much nicer effect. Um, and then we have, well, the clones. <laughs> Which star me. <laughs> uh, let's just go somewhere with this. Um, and yeah, so the camera moving was just pretty simple to do. I just moved the camera. Just the keyframe there. Uh, these... These two different types of keyframes are different. This is like, it does it and it stops. This one does it and then smooths it out, so it gradually stops, so it looks more natural. So this keyframe goes up, back, and again, I can move this around. But I don't want to. Um, and then my clone comes in. Now, there are some problems with this video where uh, I did not look eye to eye with me. So luckily, since this was shot on blue, I was able to just blue screen it out to, well, let's, let's turn this on and do that. So since it was blue screen, I could blue it out and just move the clone around wherever. Hello. But the problem is, as you can see, it cuts off. And as you can see up here, this brown is where the clone is. Um, it's very close to cutting off, so I, it actually did get cut off in an earlier draft, and I had to fix it. Be then I wasn't happy. I'm kidding. And there's an airplane, and so or helicopter, I don't know what it is, hovering over. So, well, let's just open this up and see what I did. Nothing interesting, it's just that. And you can see how, well, this is like, well, here's the power line. That black thing, that black thing right there. And this is the power line right here. The power line on him is right here, so I had to move it. And I'm glad I did. It looked much nicer than it would have, and that's what we really want in the end, right? <laughs> okay, so, dynamite's pretty simple. I just put it on top and parented it to the shake, because everyone likes to shake. Um, and so, yeah, it was nice. Um, there were some behind the scenes like keyframes I put in to keep the camera moving which was a nice transition to uh, what I needed to get to after but let's just go through this right now this is the dynamite uh, it's composed of all these dynamite layers uh, each one of them looks different and that's for a good reason um, they were originally just a picture I found on Google on white I masked it out myself since that really is the best way to do it and then I added, or I just duplicated them, I added a change color, so I can change the color to whatever I want, and a puppet tool, which means I can move everything around. And the puppet tool is easy to do. Um, let's just do it on, well, here's the fence. This fence, um, if this wasn't here, 
the dynamite would just take over that fence to get uh, since I'm too lazy to actually mask out a fence I uh, put a luma key on it which means it either keys out all the dark stuff and leaves all the bright stuff or, or it does the opposite of that so with that it turns out nice ish well as you can see there's no dynamite there so it doesn't really matter um, so let's do a puppet tool on this uh, that's rotor brush but this is the puppet so just add a puppet if this ever loads oh well apparently I can't sorry to disappoint you I'm not gonna do a puppet tool um, so we just go down the line I just moved and changed colors randomly made sure they were kind of different and then changed the just made sure they all connected to each other um, this is just a placeholder. Uh, I had originally shot this out on my camera and it attempted to 3D track it, but it was so hard to mask out in such the little time I in the little time I had, um, it it just wasn't really possible. So I just still framed it, um, which is down here. This was a video. I just freeze framed it into that and moved it around here. Um, yeah, right here. Uh, so I moved that around. And actually, it looks like, oh wait, but that's, it's just as big as the window. Well, I made it so that it was actually bigger and longer. Uh, and uh, you can do this thing in After Effects where you collapse the transform so that it's like as uh, the elements are inside this composition rather than being in their own um it's kind of like what I did with the stars. If I didn't see, you can see that there was there's some blue there from the background video, but I didn't, and that's not really all that matters. And then of course, um, I think no, uh, I was gonna add in some color correction or something, but I left it in and didn't do anything with it. So woohoo! Uh, next is the neon cat stuff. So that was actually kind of hard to do. Surprisingly, since it's Neon Cat. I did not re recreate it. I'll get to that in a second. Um, this one was kind of hard. I had to make the camera move go up um, while also making it a smooth transition to the Neon Cat. Now, the Neon Cat had a nice blue background, and it was originally going to be our house just running into Neon Cat, but, or Neon, or however you pronounce it, but it didn't work. So, what I did is I just put the original video on top. The, the neon cat on top and connected it to um, the original clone video and just masked it out and feathered it so that um, it wouldn't be that hard of a transition. Uh, and as a, you can see, I actually faded it out so that it did become kind of hard, but it was too hard to notice. And as you can as you could see in the video, uh, the shake was still applied to it. Now, to get the house explosion, I originally wanted to... Well, it, it was pretty easy. All I did was use um, a fire thing from Action Essentials. It's just fire. Boom. Um, and I just masked the trees out. Uh, I, this is the background. Well... It's pretty much the same as the background, but inverted, so that there's black. And then I put that same mask, well, I put this on top to get rid of the house, and then I moved, well, the house is out of frame right now, but that's what I did. Uh, the mask is actually really bad. Uh, it looks horrible. Let me just make this better quality. I did not really care to do it. It was supposed to be kind of a cheesy scene, but I could have done better. Um, I actually was going to make it a lot better. Uh, I can actually show you an original picture of... I was going to um, like use something like Photoshop to get rid of the trees in front of it, and it just was too hard and didn't turn out too well. So this was before... That's a video. Let's go back. And this is after. So I tried, but it just looked too horrible. And you can see that like, there is some tile mess ups, and it, and I didn't want to get over here. That was just going to be way too hard. So 
I took that house and then just flung it up into this neon cat background, which I made myself. It is composed of lots of neon cats. It's just one section of the actual GIF. I downloaded the actual GIF and just used that. I masked part of it out. Goodbye. And then I just played it over and over and over multiple times. <laughs> it was seriously big. Mm, yeah. And then just over and over. Changed the colors using uh, levels. I could, probably could have used tint, but level, or hue, like what I used for the dynamite. But levels is easier. And I'm changing the wrong one, so that's probably why. And I made it progressively darker to the original color so that you would know how many levels it's gone up. Like, darker is further into space. Ah, uh, this little hatch right here, I just masked out part of that and flipped it open using 3D controls. That is the mask to make sure that the clones do not exceed that. So, I just use that. I can. I can rotate this any way I want, actually. We're just use so hard. It's right there. Duh. They're still learning the keyboard shortcuts. But I can move that anywhere I want, which is quite nice. And what I like about After Effects 3D. And then I uh, also used a uh, black background. You can't see it because it's black. And then I to get the motion, uh, the rainbow is pretty much the same thing I did with the... Um, not that, but the neon cat, the, how I just masked it out and did it over and over again. I just took, like, one level of it and used that over. Uh, two levels, actually, because you can see it was cut off. And this was supposed to be, like, um, progressively in. It was going to, like, come out, but I it just didn't work too well. Um... And to get the motion of the house, I went to the original uh, neon cat gif and tracked it by, you know, just going to tracker, track motion, and I just tracked the point of it. Like right there, for example, and it did a great job. Not really. I was just kidding. So, um... My sister just interrupted me, even though I told her not to. <sighs> sisters, sisters. Um, and then, well, last but not least for this uh, is how I got myself in there. That was really easy, actually. Uh, the heads was just a sub-composition, or just a composition. Um, that was color-corrected and green screen. Okay, it wasn't color-corrected. But since it was kind of darker, it was closer to night, so there's lots of grain. I just, um, it was done in front of my swing set. So I just used that, put it there, cut it off, and... Yep. Um, I actually just, uh, to change them, to get them, like, to change every few frames, it, this was actual footage of me just moving my head around. I just used a timer map and block cut them, so... I chose three points in time I liked and just repeated them over and over to get that cool little effect. So, we go back to our second scene, and that's pretty much how I did it all. And as you can see, there's the camera shake. Which I don't know if it made it or ruined it for you. And the house animation is just simple keyframes I could have done better with. And so, yes, that is all. And it got... Now let's just... Finish this up. It was kind of great, a great idea too. Blah blah. Ah, oh, come on. And so yes, uh, the neon music I also got originally, and I forgot to mention that while it was going up, you might have noticed it was slightly blurry. That is because there's this cool little thing you can do in After Effects where you push this little button and it makes it so that when you push this button and there's motion, it turns it into motion blur. 
so it looks like it's actually moving. It's just cool stuff, and that's how I got most of my realism in it. So, thank you for watching. You can now pause this video and stare at the Earth. Let's before I say goodbye, I'm stretching because it's so early. It's only 4.57. So, thank you for watching again. Um, hope this explained to you how I did this stuff. And, uh, goodbye.